Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Whiskey Alpha 2, Baker, Mike Baker. That's my ham radio call sign, and my name is Alex. I'm located in western central New Jersey, and I want to talk to you today about the FT-101E as an Echo by Yezu. <clears throat> I purchased this uh, radio at a ham radio flea market, found out that uh, it had two problems. The first being the uh, 13 volt uh, line was uh, not operating. I was able to repair that with uh, two rectifier diodes and uh, replacing a disc cap. Once I got that up and running, I found out I had yet another problem. It was with the, uh, the balanced modulator circuit of the radio. Now, it's very easy to detect whether or not you have a problem like that. Uh, what you need is a dummy load and every ham should have a dummy load if you don't have one shame on you so um, you need a dummy load to transmit into you need a locking mic like a plus two mic or a d104 any kind of mic that you could lock down and then you can an audio source is handy also like a television another broadcast radio whatever what you need out of that is audio and a shortwave receiver one that will receive single sideband uh, transmissions. Uh, you key your mic down and put the transmitter in the transmit position and you tune across the signal with your shortwave receiver. What you should not hear is a signal, like a side tone, being generated at the same time. If that's what you hear, you have a problem in your balance modulator circuit. Okay, what happens in this circuit, I'm not going to go into it uh, heavy duty, so if you think this is going to be a lecture on, uh, if you think this is going to be a lecture on uh, the workings of the circuit, you're wrong. Uh, suffice it to say that the signal is being generated, the carrier signal is being generated by these, amp these oscillator circuits here once being generated they are uh, redirected to this part of the circuit up here the um, the diode ring mixer this signal will mix the signal the audio signal from your uh, microphone and the carrier signal that's being generated by those oscillators and once it, the signal passes through this these diodes this mixer set up here the carrier is eliminated and what is sent through forward into the circuit is the two sidebands upper and lower and they are later filtered out by the filtering uh, board which has uh, filter to uh, to filter out either the upper or lower side band depending on what band you're on. So realizing that I did have a carrier signal and I did have uh, audio going into the radio, I was able to deduce that one of these four diodes are bad. They're leaking or possibly open. Uh, the technician in me wanted to go in there and uh, and test these uh, diodes to find out which one was bad but then I realized that the last thing you want to do is just replace one of those diodes in that mixer uh, you you would introduce a mismatch and some noise and God knows what else the diodes are cheap they're uh, 1N 4148s I believe signal diodes replace all four of them at the same time don't mess around um, if you cannot, like I said before, if you cannot uh, get rid of that carrier on your transmitted signal through the use of VC1 and VR1, the carrier balance controls or adjustments, you have a problem. And it's basically one of these diodes. So replace them all with brand new 4148s. Also, when you're done doing that, uh, make sure that you rebalance the circuit again. 
The circuit is rebalanced with VC1 and VR1 as per the directions. It's very simple to tell whether or not that you've, you've done the job. When you're going to uh, adjust the carrier balance, uh, you have your mic turned down and you're uh, in transmit and you should be looking at your power output meter and it will deflect upwards if you've got a carrier on your signal. What you do is you, you uh, adjust VR1 and VC1 uh, right on the top of that board that I talked about before, the 1184 modulator unit. Uh, and you work those two controls until you null out the, uh, the signal. And that should eliminate your problem. Now, uh, when you're tuning across your signal, like I said before, with a shortwave receiver, you should not hear a carrier. If you hear a carrier, you have a problem. So uh, this is where you got to go. Um, what I did with the uh, with the TV going, I, I locked down the plus two mic and I listened to the TV audio over the shortwave, and I was able to tune across the frequency. Like I said before, you should not hear a carrier in there. All you should hear is your garbled audio until uh, it's tuned in, and then you should hear your audio clear in the uh, sideband receiver. If you hear a carrier in there, most likely, and you, you can't null it out the way the uh, manual says to, one of these four diodes is, is bad. So like I said before, do not replace one, replace them all. Uh, it's uh, it's much better that way. This way, they're all uh, have the same specs and tolerances, but uh, you don't want to replace just one of these. Once you do that, uh, like I said before, you can tune across your signal, transmitted signal, and you will not hear a carrier. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. So if somebody tells you your audio sounds uh, like there's RF getting into it or it sounds like uh, you're blowing bubbles or something, this is probably why. If you cannot adjust it out um, and the carrier is still there, replace all four of these diodes. So that's the long and the short of it. If you want to learn more about balanced modulators uh, and ring detectors, uh, you can go on any website or you can visit my friend uh, Alan's website, W2AEW. He's uh, an expert at this sort of thing, and uh, he'll be able to explain the inner workings of this. But it's not that uh, hard. To, it's not that hard to figure out. And also, I've told you exactly how you can find out if you even have the problem. So uh, now that I showed you an easy way um, to to test for the problem, you don't even need fancy um, test gear. So uh, so there you go. That's the long and the short of it. And these these uh, Gaysus are very easy to work on two screws, the board pops right out. You could take your time soldering it in there and now is the time to buy a nice battery powered soldering iron or a 25 watt soldering iron. You don't want to go in here with a blowtorch and start uh, cranking away on these boards. Okay? Uh, you don't want to do that. So uh, get yourself a decent soldering board and have fun. Now the only thing you got to be careful is when you replace these diodes you want to make sure that you orient them the way they came out. In other words the uh, the anode, which is the arrow, and the uh, the cathode, which is the band. You want to make sure that uh, the board is not marked that way. So you have to make sure that you. Uh, I suggest you take a picture, a couple pictures with your cell phones, how these things are oriented. It'll save you a lot of headache when you put them back in. Uh, it's not a difficult thing to do, and uh, you'll get your radio up and running again, which is the whole, uh, which is the whole deal. So uh, I just want to take this opportunity to wish you all the very best. Stay well, be safe, uh, take care till we talk again. This is WA2BMB in Western Central New Jersey. Alex saying bye-bye for now.